Am I to initiate release sequencer? On my mark. Five. We're on express elevator to hell. Going down. Two. One. Mark. Hello, everyone. My name is Mark, a.k.a. Derringer. Today is Sunday, July 21st, and you are listening to episode 218 of the Instant Action Podcast, your weekly source for planetside news and information. As always, I'm brought to you by great listeners like you via the Support the Show tab on instantactionpodcast.com. So hopefully everybody has been having a great week. I don't know about you guys, but here in... Massachusetts. It's apparently a nasty heat wave this weekend, so uh, nothing but a good excuse for me to sit down in my basement and play Planet Side 2 uh, because it's nice and cool down here where my recording studio is. So uh, I've been trying to play a bit of Planet Side 2 this weekend. Um, uh, I'm sure many of you who are listening know all the drama that's recently gone down and uh, I will address some of that in my first topic briefly, um, but it hasn't stopped me from playing Planet Side 2. Now, granted, the first half of the week I was still kind of reeling from that uh, Community Smash play, but by the end of the week I was definitely jonesing for some Planet Side 2 and, and have definitely played a bunch this weekend. But uh, I know you don't want to hear about me. You want to hear about what's in store for this week's show. Well, first, like I said, I do feel that I need to make a statement about that recent Reddit drama that I was unfortunately involved on. But again, don't worry. It will be short. Uh, after that, it's going to be back to real news about Planet Side 2, which includes a PTS update, uh, a dev live stream, which had some unexpected things in it. Uh, and finally, a fun topic, at least I think fun, on planet side slang that I wanted to talk about. So strap in as we hot drop into another episode of the Instant Action Podcast. So first, like I said this week, uh, I feel like I need to make a statement here. I made a statement on Reddit regarding it as well. But if you're living under a rock, uh, I was dragged into a little, um, I guess, I I'm going to say little, um, a, a little dispute between some players in game uh, and some people who are unhappy with B-Way and some people in B-Way did something stupid on a stream and uh, because I play with B-Way on one of my characters, uh, I was personally attacked saying that I condone what was done on the stream. Uh, basically, a couple guys, you know, uh, did a countdown and dropped the N-word on Twitch, which uh, is completely and totally uncalled for. Uh, anybody who listens to this show should obviously realize that uh, I am completely against that. I, I'm certainly appalled uh, that they had done something like that. Just absolute stupidity. Um, but not using common sense. And someone else on Reddit decided they would pull that information and then because I play with B-Way, uh, specifically say that I condone, and I and my podcast condone uh, that type of racist behavior. And obviously, I do not condone that type of racist behavior. And like I said, I f was very, very upset with the group of people that decided to do that. Uh, and also equally upset that someone would instantly brand me a racist uh, or someone who condones racism just for playing with a group of people in Planet Side 2. Um, I play with B-Way uh, maybe a couple hours a week, again, on one of my characters. Um, th th when they play TR, I don't usually play with them because I don't like playing TR. Sorry, TR guys. Um, I us mostly play them on one of my Vanu characters. Um Again, I don't spend a ton of time with them because I just don't have a ton of time. You know, I get a couple hours a night, uh, if I'm lucky, uh, to play Planet Side 2, and I do it where I think I'm going to have the most fun. Um, 
but again, I, I I'm very disappointed that this person who made this post, uh, not excusing the 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 racism on part of the B Wave members, um, but I'm very disappointed that the person who made the post, and I'm not going to use his name because I don't want to give him any more ammunition or anything like that, um, decided to use my podcast logo. Uh, and my opening intro for the podcast to push his agenda. Uh, I respectfully asked him to remove my information from it, and he refused. And so I will be taking appropriate actions uh, to have my content removed from his YouTube channel, uh, even though he claims that it's not his YouTube channel. Uh, whatever. Uh, whoever's YouTube channel it is, I did not give them permission to use my graphics and images as part of my podcast. And again, I will take care of that uh, on the back end through appropriate channels. Uh, if you are someone who listens to the show and would like to use my logo uh, and stuff like that for any reason, reach out to me. Uh, I will most likely say it's perfectly okay. Uh, as an example, Aflick was saying he wanted to add a link to my podcast on his Twitch channel. Uh, and for something like that, I said, sure, you feel free. Uh, I, I would love for you to use my podcast logo and, and stuff like that to, to promote me. Again, if, if you're going to do something nice, <laughs> reciprocal, anything like that, uh, reach out to me and I will most likely give you mo my blessings to use my logo. Uh, if you're going to produce a hit piece on me because you have some you know axe to grind um with me for whatever reason I, then you know you can you can pound sand uh because i'm not going to let you do that uh again to tldr this i got dragged into some drama that i don't feel that i was a part of i'm unhappy with both sides of this i'm going to be taking a break from playing with b-way for a little while uh you will see me more on connery uh, for the next few weeks, uh, Drew actually told me that I should go play with the guys in rest. Uh, I don't know if their hours are going to work for me. Uh, obviously, Connery is a West Coast server and I'm an East Coast guy. Uh, I like to be in bed by 10 p.m. Eastern time, which is probably around the start time for most of their ops, but we'll see what happens on the weekends. But again, you might see me a bit more on Connery than I've used to be. Um, I, I know a lot of people who play on Connery. Maybe that will make them happy. Uh, and I'm sure it will make some people happy to kill me in game. So that's where this stands. Uh, again, I don't stand for racism. Uh, I also don't appreciate being uh, collateral damage on somebody's uh, crusade against an outfit in game. And uh, I wish you guys would leave me out of it. Uh, attack me for something that I actually did, and I'll respect you a little bit more. But with that, enough on this topic. Let's actually talk about some real Planetside news that people actually give a damn about. And that first piece of news is actually the July 15th PTS update. Uh, this came a day before the actual live stream that I'm going to talk about next. So some of the stuff I'm going to talk about here is actually going to be talked about on the live stream topic as well, but let's dive into this. So first off, they are expanding the mentor system, and this has been already updated on PTS, not on live yet, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see this coming to live very quickly. Uh, so basically, they've added a new mentor rating to the game itself, and this is going to show up on your character screen. Uh, if you're you know hitting the little character option in the lower left, uh, when you're in the escape screen, uh, you'll see, you know, where your character image is, your BR rank, your your uh, ASP rating if you have one, uh, also whatever uh, banner you're using. On that screen, you're going to see a mentor rating, uh, which for most people is going to be zero. Uh, and uh, as you are mentoring players in game, you're going to earn this rating, and it's basically based on earning mentor ribbons. Uh, and only while leading a mentor squad and only with players who are under BR 30 in the battle rank. Uh, an interesting thing about this is that they've added a decay system to this. So you need to maintain or, you know, or continue to earn mentor ribbons this way in order to 
keep having your mentor rating. Uh, and they've lumped it into four tiers to begin with. Uh, copper is from zero to 199 rating. Silver tier is 200 to 499. Gold is 500 to 799. And Araxium tier is 800 to 1000. So as you can see, uh, zero is the lowest level you can have and 1000 is the highest level that you can have. Now, also in addition to this, they've added a new player chat, which we saw kind of sneak into the game uh, last month. Uh, basically, anybody who is under BR30 is going to have access to this where they can ask questions and receive answers from folks who actually have earned uh, different tiers in this mentor rating. Uh, silver tier and greater can read and speak in this channel, uh, and their name is going to be prefaced with the word mentor just for clarity. Uh, if you're a new player using the slash new or slash new player or slash mentor, uh, and then whatever your question is, is going to post in this chat channel. Um, Moving on in the mentor system, they're not offering any gameplay rewards on this because in their minds they want players who pursue this rating to do it for the right reason and in their mind that's to help new players. Um, I don't know that I agree with that and uh, I, I watched uh, Latrodectus's video on this as well and I agree with the majority of what he said uh, basically, that if you're not offering a reward for this, that you're uh, that they might be missing the mark with this. Uh, again, they're not offering any reward for it. You're just going to have this mentor rating and be able to to speak in this channel. They're not offering any in-game rewards like uh, a special camo, a special helmet, a special gun, you know, anything like that. Uh, I I really think that they're missing the mark by not giving some sort of reward for the folks that are, are being mentors. I mean, I can see Robo, uh, as an example, uh, outfit leader for Goder, who loves mentoring new players, love answer, loves answering new questions. I can see him as a person specifically who's going to try to grind out this mentor, uh, mentor rating just so that he can be helpful in game because that's just the person that he is. And I wish someone like him would be given some sort of reward in game rather than just being able to chat in some special channel. I'd love to see him get a helmet that not many people have or a specific armor that not many people have or a specific camo that not many people have or have access to. Uh, I, I think that uh, while... That is a system that can certainly be abused if there's some sort of reward that you're getting from it. Uh, I agree with Latro when he says that you're just going to get people who may not be the best mentors grinding this out and maybe not for the right reasons. Uh, so I hope that the devs listening to me as well as another voice chiming in on this uh, hopes that they consider offering some better reward for the people who are actually doing this for the right reasons. Uh, and just the final wrap up on this is that they did say they may want to make sure when this goes live that people are respectful and helpful because they're not going to be tolerating any malicious behavior. And it, they did say that this could have real implications on your account. So uh, I would expect people that are gaming this system just so that they can get in the mentor chat to provide bad information or to trash talk people or things like that. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see bans attached to this as well. All right, moving on in this PTS, PTS update, there were a whole bunch of other infantry changes that are dropped as well. Uh, first is with the Ambusher Jump Jets. They are now going to tick up energy over time instead of recharging instantly. And also implants and other equipment that affect this restoration and consumption now will also impact Ambusher Jump Jets in a similar manner to other abilities, uh, which is a good change as far as I'm concerned. Also, next, the flight suit, which is a light assault suit. The cooldown reduction on ambush or jump jets has been removed from this, and now instead it's going to increase the regeneration rate of ambush or jump jet fuel by 10, 15, 17 and a half, or 20%, depending on what rank you have it. Also, the paratrooper implant 
also affects Ambusher Jump Jets at all ranks. Uh, its energy regener regeneration was increased to 3, 4, 5.5, and 8% restoration based on what rank you have it. Uh, that's 1 through 4. And also the rank 5 benefit was changed to reduce fall damage for 6 seconds instead of increasing the bottom armor. Next, Aerial Combatant, another... Uh, implant that affects light assault that has also been the rank five benefit no longer instantly recharges ambusher jump jets instead it now restores the same maximum fuel to ambusher jump jets as it does to other jump jet types at all ranks next the failsafe implant also now works with ambusher jump jets at all ranks and if you don't remember what failsafe does, that's when your shield is broken, you gain 10, 12, 15, or 20% of your maximum ability energy. Uh, the action can only occur once every 20 seconds. And at rank 5, whenever it's on cooldown, receiving melee damage will shock the attacker for 150 non-lethal damage. So again, as you can see, failsafe is going to start re giving you... Uh, ability energy for your ambusher jump jets going forward next assimilate another implant uh, its rank 5 bonus now restores ambusher jump jet energy as well and if you've forgotten what the rank 5 does for assimilate it restores 10 percent of your maximum ability energy so it's going to restore 10 percent uh, of the ambusher jump jets uh, moving on from ambusher jump jets uh, next the heavyweight implant uh, had a change so that it now plays a particle effect every time you activate it. The survivalist implant got a change as well so that it no longer triggers when your health drops below 40%, and instead it now triggers when the player's shield is depleted. The dev note on this one is that they're looking to increase the effectiveness of survivalist on non-carapace loadouts. Uh, clearly it was being used a lot on carapace loadouts. Uh, because the rank 5 ability increases your sprint speed. So uh, there's that. Uh, next, the assassin implant has been restructured, and the percent chance to trigger was removed. Now kills beyond 150, 125, 100, or 50 meters will remove spot checks on the player and conceal them from spot attempts for one second. And at rank 5, headshot kills will also trigger the ability, and targets you damage with any weapon will be spotted. Now, previously, there was just a percent chance to remove the spotted condition, uh, unless it was a headshot kill, um, except for rank five. Uh, so I'm I'm happy to see that it's just a matter of the range now is what it is. So I, I think I can see a lot more infiltrators or, or bolters using this than they were before. Uh, next, the Gunslinger implant now activates when NSO characters kill other NSO characters, obviously just a bug. Uh, Mending Field, the rank 5 benefit, should now work with NSO characters. And if you forgot what the rank 5 for Mending Field is, uh, basically Mending Field, allies who are below... 100, 150, 225, or 300 health passively heal for 15 health per second while you're within 7 meters. Uh, rank 5, your deployed shield recharging fields now also carry this effect. So clearly the, re the shield recharging fields uh, were not affecting the NSO characters, and that should work now. Uh, next, Electrotech, the implant, its rank 5 benefit now despawns enemy non turret deployables instead of destroying them. Uh, which I'm not so happy with this change. Um, I mean, you you get credit. Oh, I don't know if you get credit for despawning them now like you did for destroying them. Obviously, uh, if you destroy an enemy, enemy explosive, you get experience. Um, and also, you have a chance to kill other players. And um, I don't like the fact that they changed this. And I think a lot of the community is behind me that they don't like this change either uh, but we'll have to see how it plays actually on live uh, next the the final suit one the advanced shield capacitor uh, the NSO combat medic and heavy assault now have access to the suit slot uh, it also now reduces shield recharge delay by one second uh, in addition to its pre-existing benefit uh, but this does not stack with the survivalist implant. And the dev note on this one is that the change should help bring ASC back into a more competitive place with certain loadouts. Finally, moving on to weapons, the NS44L Showdown. This is the uh, 
the uh, the weapon that you can receive from the alert rewards. They've changed the ADS movement speed multiplier from 0.25 to 0.5. Uh, and they, the dev note on this is that the minor change for feel while doing some cleaning of other elements relating to the aim down sights fire mode just sounds like something that they missed in the past. Moving on to construction, uh, they feel that construction overall is about where they want it to be after the last re revamp but they're going to continue to improve upon it incrementally. So they've increased the health of objects that players typically use to defend the perimeter of a construction base, and this reduced the amount of soft points to break into a base. Uh, and again, this is in, in an effort to try to make construction more interactive. Uh, they've also started looking towards ways to introduce activated effects similar to the st structure shield module. Uh, also, ammunition towers will have been given a new repair effect that players can turn on to heal nearby allied vehicles. They are going to continue to monitor how those changes perform on test and continue to iterate best based on feedback. Also, the Sunderer Garage, Infantry Tower, Pillbox, and Solid Wall Health was doubled to 24,000. Uh, the Cordium Drain on modules was halved to 0.25 per second. Uh, the ammo towers have a new icon on the minimap. The ammo towers can now be activated to repair the vehicles within 15 meters of the tower for 50 health per second for 25 seconds. The repair module now repairs solid walls. And finally, the construction build time objects, build time for all objects was reduced from 45 seconds down to 30 seconds. So finally on the PTS, there were some other miscellaneous changes and fixes. Uh, the biggest one, I think, is the speculative fix for outfit application crashing when being viewed. I mean, that's one that has been bothering uh, outfit leaders for a long time. Uh, they also fixed the issue with enabling and disabling Bloom in the UI. It, it now works. Uh, they fixed the Thumper's disruptor ammo, which was making duplicate effects on multiple grouped targets. Uh, they also fixed the ammo belt, so it provides additional ammo for the thumper it wasn't before. Uh, they added a craft implants button to the implants section of the loadout screen. Uh, NSO characters shouldn't be damaged by allied pain spires. Uh, they also should now have access to a default horn on the, horn on the lightning. Uh, and finally, the NSO Light Assault Rocket Rifle now updates its firing modes when special ammo is applied. So there is everything that just dropped on the PTS. Obviously, a mentor system is the biggest one, but there were quite a few implant uh, changes uh, as well. But with that, let's move on to our third topic this week uh, about the dev live stream. So this live stream occurred on July 16th. Unfortunately, uh, I was driving home at the time, so I'll I'll ask the devs again. 2 p.m. Move it to 3 p.m. because that way it'll be 6 p.m. my time, and I can make every single one. Because, uh, like I said, I'm always driving home right when these things kick off. So, you know, just selfishly, let's move these things back an hour. Uh, that'll make it better for me. Uh, so what did they talk about on this dev live stream? Well, first, they took some time to actually talk about the PS4 version of Planetside 2 because obviously they've been getting a lot of flack recently about the PS2 being ignored on the PlayStation 4, even though that's not really the case. Uh, but they said, Nick specifically said, that they're in a good place to potentially see that update the DirectX 11 update for the PS4 come out last week which it didn't or the upcoming week so that leads me to believe that we are going to be seeing a big uh, game update for Planetside 2 on the PlayStation 4 this coming week uh, or at least before the end of July which is good news for PS4 folks I know uh, I saw Baloney Coma in the stream uh, in, when I rewatched it 
uh, being very excited about it. <laughs> I know he's a big player of it and looking forward to it. Uh, but in, in addition to that, they talked about some of the boosts that they've seen. Uh, FPS increases are about 22%. They said similar to what they saw on uh, PC side, but even more so load times are hugely improved. Like loading into the game used to take at over a minute and a half. Uh, and they've gotten those down to 50 seconds at startup. Uh, but even bigger redeploy times, which used to take 40 seconds uh, minimum, are down to 15 seconds. So they're, they're definitely seeing a lot of performance increases uh, on the PS4 based on this DirectX update. Uh, so the sooner we see that come to live for the PS4, the better. Because uh, Raul reiterated again on the stream that they really want parity between the two the two systems uh that doesn't mean we're ever going to see the two sides playing each other but they want them to be on the same level game update wise which i think is good news for ps4 uh historically uh they've definitely lagged behind the pc side of the game uh but we'll see what happens with this next update uh after that on the stream they talked about the mentor update they showed uh basically everything I talked about in the last uh, topic on this week's podcast, um, how the rating works, uh, how people earn it and things like that. Uh, Rel also mentioned that he saw Latro's video as well and uh, was taking some of his thoughts to heart. So maybe we're going to see some changes to it uh, down the line, but we've got to see it actually come to live first and see how people are actually working on it. Uh, but then they took some time to introduce a new person. And they actually actually introduced him at the beginning of the screen, but uh, he actually started talking in the, the, the third part of the live stream itself. But his name is Alan Lapidus, and he said that uh, prior to coming to Sony, he worked on World of Warcraft, which was kind of cool. And Nick geeked out about World of Warcraft for a second, saying that he tried just the uh, 14-day trial or 30-day trial, and that was it. He didn't get sucked in, whereas Rel said that he lost multiple years of his life to World of Warcraft. I also lost multiple years of my life to World of Warcraft. Uh, but coming to Sony, Alan said that he worked on a lot of the original uh, art for Planet Side 2, uh, a lot of the environmental art for Planet Side 2. So he was the perfect person to actually talk about the next part of the stream, which was when they introduced some images and uh, a, a Blender video or a Blender thing of an actual NS Sanctuary, which they want to see as a social hub for Planetside 2. Uh, it's actually a, a physical satellite that exists in outer space above uh, the planet of Araxis. Uh, and actually, when they looked out the window, you could see other satellites also, which was kind of interesting. Uh, but there's a huge atrium, which kind of has a hotel lobby feel to it. Uh, and they said that all the factions should be able to hang out together uh, within this social hub. Uh, they showed off a few different wings. There was a medical wing, uh, which they're going to looks like they're going to put the VR tutorial there. Uh, there's going to be some other wings with NPCs where they said maybe you can barter and trade, which was really confusing because it doesn't seem like that has anything to do with Planet Side. I mean, you hit the escape key and that's where the shop is. Uh, I mean, maybe they're going to take that away from that screen and force you to go to an NPC in game to, to do stuff like that. Uh, that would kind of be weird, but okay. Um, it was an interesting little thing. Uh, I mean, it's a, they said they put it all together really in about two weeks. Um, I, I'm going to be honest. It felt like them doing work on something that didn't really fit within the existing game of Planet Side 2. There, I said it. I'm sorry. It, that's my gut feeling on this. Like, uh, I, I feel like... Sanctuary is a cool idea, and I mean, I remember it from the original Planet Side, as that was the starting point. Every time you logged in, you logged in in Sanctuary, and you were able to pull any vehicles from Sanctuary. You could fly them over to or drive them over to a warp gate, and you would warp to whatever planet or whatever continent uh, they were actually connected to. Uh, you could also hop on the heart there, and that would be your way to 
instant action or drop in on a specific battle on a specific continent. Uh, it doesn't sound like this is what they're doing with Sanctuary in Planet Side 2. Uh, and it just feels a little weird to have something like this, somebody spending their time working on something like this, uh, when there could be other in-game stuff to work on instead, uh, like Osher instead. There was no mention of Osher on this live stream. Uh, and again, they only worked on it for two weeks, so in the grand scheme of things, it's not a ton of time that was spent on this. I just, I'm just scratching my head trying to see how this really fits into Planet Side 2. And moving off topic a little bit, well, not really off topic, but outside of the live stream a little bit, uh, obviously people took the live stream and condensed it down and dropped it on Reddit. Uh, and people made comments regarding this as well. And the one comment that jumped out at me was one made by Anu Erebus, and sorry if I butcher your name, on Reddit. Uh, and, and he wrote, Pipe Dream Time. They're making the sanctuary as a social hub because somebody at Daybreak had a brain, and instead of making a spin off arena, it's going to be integrated alongside Planet Side 2 as a shared game universe. The sanctuary is a social hub, and from it, you can join the major continent battles or other game modes. Uh, he goes on to say, if that's not the case, I can see myself spending maybe 10 minutes there to run around and see the place before I go play the game and see all the bases and parts of the map that need actual improvements. Anyway, Erebus' second point in this, that if it's not the case, he's just going to spend maybe 10 minutes running around there and that's it and never go there again. That's how I can see myself doing it in this first iteration as well. There's really no draw for me to go into the sanctuary right now. Now, if... And this is, again, just his pipe dream, something he wishes would happen. If they're making this sanctuary an actual hub where you can either play Planet Side 2 or Planet Side Arena, that's a lot more interesting. Uh, and I could actually see them using the vendors, uh, you know, to purchase different things within Planet Side Arena. Uh, maybe you could integrate the two games together better that way. Uh, this is actually an interesting idea that I think the devs should run with. Uh, and we know that a lot of the people working on Planet Side Arena are working on Planet Side 2 uh, and vice versa. We have not heard anything about Planet Side Arena in a while. This would actually be a very interesting thing, in my opinion. So I I'm, I'm hoping that Anu Erebus is onto something, and maybe there's some hidden information that's going to come out later on that this is what they're working on, because I think that would actually be something cool. But again, uh, dropping everything, this is just his pipe dream. It's now also my pipe dream uh, that this is what they're doing. So that was the entire live stream. It was actually a pretty short live stream, uh, all said and done. Uh, I'm going to include a link to it, as always. You guys can go watch it yourself. Uh, to see, to specifically see all that, uh, all the sanctuary stuff that they did show off. I, I will say, the stuff that Alan worked on, it looks really nice. Uh, it's it's really cool looking um, and stuff like that. I just don't see how it fits in Planet Side Two right now, but maybe that will change. Uh, but enough. Let's move on to our fourth and final topic this week. That last topic is just a, uh, a, a quick Reddit post. Uh, uh, Chesbeak posted this, and he was asking, what are some words or phrases that you can only find on Araxis? And I thought this was an interesting little question that he asked, and it actually got a lot of responses. Uh, you know, th people said things like Zerg fit, C4 fairies, those are words that they've only heard used in Planet Side 2. Um, other things like Sky Knights. Uh, things like that. Um, the Theorem Shuffle is one that I've only heard in uh, Planet Side 2. The, the Battle Goose for the Beetlejuice is something I've only heard. Uh, Gal Drop is something I've only heard here. Uh, and then the one thing that I had to add to this was Reach Cat, because Reach Cat is certainly something that's only heard in Planet Side 2. Uh, and one user running on, running on caffeine asked me, what the hell is Reach Cat? Uh, so 
if you guys aren't aware of the chat filter that's in game, and I think a lot of people are, but the chat filter filters out specific swear words and words that they don't want used in game and replaces them with other words. Uh, a prime example is if you type fuck in chat, it comes out as Higby. Uh, I think if you type shit in chat, it comes out as Clegg. Or, or maybe it's, um, yeah, it's not shit, it's ass is Clegg. Uh, but uh, other things like bitch is directly attributed to reach cat. And this was done by, uh, I, I know it was done specifically by T-Ray because um, back when we were doing ReachCast, Knox was trying to get a decal of his cat in game. It was awful, <laughs> but you know, whatever. Uh, I printed up stickers of them. We took them to SW Live and people almost tried to stick them on T-Ray's car, which he was losing his mind over. And then after that, the chat filter came in game and... I know it was on T Ray's request that bitch was replaced with Reach Cat. So this was the one thing that I had to add to this topic. And uh, again, running on caffeine was appreciative of a little bit of planet side history that he was not aware of. I'll include a link to this Reddit post because uh, I, I found it interesting to actually read through. And I think some of you might find it interesting to read through as well. But with that, let's end this week's show and move on to housekeeping. 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 Come back later, please. Housekeeping. Not now. Housekeeping. Go away. I coming anyway. All right. Unfortunately, no emails, no voicemails this week. Uh, maybe I'm going to get some next week based on the drama that went on. Um, but we'll we'll deal with those if they come across. But that's going to be it for this week's show. How can you get in touch with me or the show itself? First off, visit my website, www.instantactionpodcast.com. Email me, instantactionshow at gmail.com. Call me and leave me a voicemail, 347-4VM4PS2. Those digits are 347-486-4772. And finally, follow the show on Twitter, at instactpodcast. But in closing... If you've enjoyed the show, please leave me a review on your podcast listening avenue of choice, whether it's iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or anywhere else. Also, feel free to tell your friends and outfit mates about the show. But finally, thanks for listening, and keep spamming that Join Combat, formerly known as Instant Action Button. Derringer out.